winter time and the living's easy. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Melanie and I am super jazzed to be here as always. I'm excited to share my winter spreads with you. I know winter spread is kind of nondescript and a little different, but I will explain. I like to live and plan my life to the best of my abilities in relationship to the season or seasons. Therefore, my journal is divided into four seasons with three months in each season. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I work with and set up a seasonal spread. And then I'm going to show you how I set up the first month of the wonderful winter season, December. On that note, let's head over to the desk and take a look. Spoiler alert, this is my new 2022 bullet journal. It is very cute, if I do say so myself. The first spread we are starting with is the winter cover page. The entire spread was designed to enable me to cut out those few splotches of red watercolor at the top of the page. So I decided to do a bunch of birch trees. I did a birch tree spread back in February of 2021, and I loved how it turned out. Because I do my best to live seasonally. There is not a lot of colors here in the winter and keeping to neutrals through the winter season is the game plan for 2022. I start by just outlining some rough sketches of where I would want the trees to go and then I create just a very simple box in the center where I'm going to write the title for the page. Once everything is outlined, I just take my Crayola markers here and start coloring everything in. I got this whole set of Crayola skin tone markers. So I have always found myself picking out the beiges and browns from different felt kits. So to find a whole felt set that was just beiges and browns seemed weirdly serendipitous. When you're coloring in a tree, or a birch tree specifically, making sure that you use small, short, horizontal lines does a lot for texture and really adds a great effect in different tones for your bark on your tree. That's one of the main reasons I love doing this birch tree spread. It is so easy to expand upon, so if you wanted to use these birch trees for something like a rolling weekly spread, it would take you just two markers, a color, and then an outlining felt to basically create a forest for yourself. I just liked how easy it was and, and how done it looked for how little effort it takes, if that makes sense. Once the trees are colored in, I just took a brown marker or fine liner here and I traced the trees and added different clusters of horizontal lines to add that birch bark depth. It's important to sneak in a few rounded eye areas on the bark as well. If you look at birch trees, they often have some knots in them. They're not really knots, but they're like eyes and they can look really creepy in the forest sometimes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now it's time to cut out around the top parts of the trees and branches to remove the watercolor that leaked onto this page. I love my solution for this because it is such an example of something I call forced creativity or AKA problem solving. This entire spread looks like it looks because I made a mistake and I was trying to fix that mistake. So just remember that it's okay to make mistakes and sometimes fixing them is where all the joy can come from. Wow, that sounded like a Hallmark Christmas card. You are welcome. I am not somebody who can do very fancy, elegant, and pretty calligraphy, so as opposed to spending a lot of effort in attempting to do that and being disappointed in the end, I just went for very simple font. Winter 2022. All right, so the second winter spread we are getting into here is going to be for winter projects. I cut out the areas around the branches so that I could see on this side where I needed to sketch in more trees and how I could utilize the same holes and make it look realistic. Remember to put a piece of paper underneath the page so you don't accidentally color outside of the lines and ruin a different page. Just like on our winter cover page, I just colored in the trees, outlined with my brown fine tip pen, and started adding horizontal lines and some texture with different eyes on the birch trees. Depending on the season, this spread can get pretty full. I like to keep a seasonal project tracker or list or just an area where I could write down to do's if I wanted because it gives me a longer time frame. I can take the things that I have on my winter projects list and divide them up in between December, January, and February as opposed to trying to get them done in one month. I originally started doing this for things like gardening, so in the spring, my springtime project list can get quite expansive and it gives me more of a realistic timeline and I don't have to copy over my massive to-do list into different spreads. That is kind of one of the main motivations behind a spread like this for me. I like how this spread turned out because it kind of looks like an archway or a door Along with the winter project page, I do a seasonal tarot pull. I don't actually have my tarot spread completed for the season of winter yet, so I'm simply going to set this page up and I will fill it in later on. If you want to see how I do a seasonal tarot forecast for an entire year in advance, hit the subscribe button so that you can see when I release that video later on this month.
Something new I'm trying this year is the monthly mirror section. So at the top, I'm going to write in the tarot card that I have pulled for the season of winter. And underneath, I will have the monthly mirror option for December, January, and February. I wanted to include an area where I could specifically reflect on the tarot card and how it manifested and showed itself for each individual month within a season. I also wanted to have the monthly mirror all in one spot so I could see consecutively December, January, and February and compare how the tarot card and its meanings might have shown up differently in each month or how it could have progressed over a larger kind of character arc or arc of development over the three months combined. Keeping it very simple, light, and open, I just do a box at the top and write in winter projects, again in a very simple, doing my best to keep it neat font. That is it. That is how I use a seasonal spread in my journal. I hope you find that useful. I often will do some type of seasonal tracker where the tracker itself will span the three months within that season. So there is always opportunity to expand what I include in my seasonal spreads. This season for winter, I'm keeping it fairly simple because I know what I do in the winter and it's all about interior house projects and fine arts and sewing so it's pretty self-explanatory in the winter but my seasonal spreads do change come different seasons. Last year for example when it was springtime I had a planting tracker and a water tracker. Now that we have set up our winter cover page, our winter project page, and gotten our seasonal tarot page ready to be filled in, we're going to take a look at setting up December. I know we are already a few days into December, but I enjoyed making this spread and wanted to share it with you regardless. Because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do my journal according to the seasons, the first month in my 2022 bullet journal is actually December 2021. So if you are watching this video, you're getting a little bit of a sneak peek into my 2022 bullet journal. I am releasing these videos out of order so that I can stay in tune with the seasons and that you guys can follow a little bit of a better timeline. I got my new bullet journal in the mail four days before December started, so all of my Pagan Plan With Me series is going to be a little bit delayed. I'm doing my darndest to catch up, but we're going to be out of order here so that you guys can see the December spread close-ish to the beginning of December. <laughs> I love the color and the texture and the entire energy that brown paper bags bring into a bullet journal. And I know that might sound silly, but it is so satisfying to have a rough edge and such warm, rich color brought to you by something as simple as a brown paper bag. My whole December theme is based off of those old school looking packages. Back in the good old days, there was no such thing as fancy wrapping paper, so gifts were often just wrapped in packaging paper, which would be brown, like this. I mentioned it earlier, but I like to use fairly neutral tones and colors, especially during winter time and for winter spreads. When I look outside in the winter, it is usually just black, white, and some varying degrees of a brown. So it felt in tune and restful to have brown paper bag theme. 
I will admit though, calling my December spread a brown paper bag theme is not very glamorous. So maybe we won't call it that. I just ripped out the shapes that I wanted, glued them into the book, and then began to sketch on top with a pencil. I am going to just be writing a very simple title. Again, I am not doing any fancy cursive because that is not my strong suit. And I'm going to do some lovely sketches of parcels. I'm only using a black fine tip marker. I'm not using any kind of color yet. I think I'll come back in later on with some beige to add some depth to some of the presents and the ribbons. But for now, I'm just going in with my fine tip black pen and tracing out different types of packages in the bottom corner. and a few packages on the title just to give some creative interest, if you would. Skills-wise, this is an extremely easy spread to do. It only requires maybe two pens, one if you don't need or want any accent color, some glue and some paper, and I just drew boxes and some makeshift bows and stuff. So all in all, not a lot of equipment required and very achievable. I have decided to do a vertical calendar. I have never done one of these before, but I am really excited. I normally just draw in the actual calendar with the squares, but I'm going to number one through 31 for the entire month and go back in and write uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next to the numbers and use a vertical style calendar. Let me know in the comments below if you use this type of calendar. This is my first time and I'm excited about it. I already feel like it's going to be a lot more efficient and I feel like I'm gonna use it more. While I create the calendar on the left, I am outlining a little bit of a tracker for the month of December. Normally I don't do month specific trackers, but there are a few habits I am starting this month and I think it would be good to keep a close eye on them, so. Here at the top, I am writing Witchling and Earthling. I wanted to have a lot of space to write specific things in this calendar. Anything that is involved in my spiritual practice or anything to do with the planetary movement, so full moons, new moons, when we are entering different seasons like Capricorn season, etc., when the solstice is, that is all going to go on the left under Witchling, and then more mundane things are going to go on the right under Earthling, like my friend's birthday or when Christmas is, and for me this is just a fun way to divide and um, categorize my events so they're not all just squished into one little box. On the right here, I am just creating a few different boxes with a nice beige drop shadow. I am initiating some type of morning routine this year, and I'm going to revise the morning routine each month and hopefully refine it to the perfect morning routine for me. So in December, I'm starting with a very rough outline, which you won't actually see me fill in here because I haven't fully decided what it's going to be yet but I'm going to adapt it and change it as I go, so that's exciting. I also have a Christmas list and a general December to-do list. Thank you. 
Now for the weekly spread, I am doing the exact same thing, just gluing in some brown paper bag goodness, going over top and sketching in with a pencil just some packages and parcels and bows. Now, it would not be bullet journaling if I did not create a Dutch door. I wanted to try doing two weeks per page and looking at it now, it's quite tight and I know that I'm probably going to feel cramped and like I am running out of space, but we will see how it goes. If it turns out that it is way too cramped next month, I'll go down to only having one week per page, but I do like how it looked. It was very clean and quite simple, just having the small lines to indicate the separate days. I did have the initial of the day of the week, and then the date underneath. This is also my first time doing a rolling task list. That is what is on the Dutch door. Because it's my first time, I don't really feel comfortable explaining it to you, but the gist of it is you write down the thing you wanna do on the left underneath the task, and then when you achieve said task, you X off underneath the day of the week it was achieved on. These kinds of lists are for tasks that don't have to get done by a certain day. And because most of my tasks are like that, I wanted to have a Dutch door in the center here that would allot me a lot of room to make these kinds of lists. So I will keep you posted on how I do with it. But so far, I like the concept and I'm excited to try. Now, hindsight 2020 moment, I would suggest that you just glue the brown paper bag on the opposite side of the Dutch door and cut it out all at once instead of having to do this precarious knife work that I ended up having to do. It would save you a lot of time to only have to cut this once. Don't worry, I will make the mistake for you and you can learn from me. <laughs> I'm doing the exact same thing on the other side of this Dutch door. I'm doing some packages up the side on the brown paper bag. I should just call it craft paper, but I'm committed to brown paper bag now, so. <laughs> This will be the task list for the two weeks on this page. Because there is an odd number of weeks in December, I decided to do the task list and the last week on the same page. I also messed up the numbers, so I just scribbled them out and redid it. At the bottom of the page, I put more brown paper bag and drew some presents just to finalize this spread. On the right hand side, I left the page blank and will do some type of art or quote page to end off December. I'm looking to find a cute quote or saying or short story about the solstice, something that is a good 
kind of cap to December. I like to start my months on the left page, so I wouldn't want to start January on this page, which is why I'm going to come up with some type of art or quote to fill it up. That is it for the month of December. Now comes filling in all of the information. I am absolutely in love with the natural tones so far in my bullet journal for both the seasonal spread for winter and also the December spread. I just love neutral tones right now. Maybe that'll change once spring arrives, but so far December is looking cute. Oh man, it feels good having a working bullet journal again after falling off the bullet journal bandwagon around August sometime. Having my bullet journal up and running has felt surprisingly grounding. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching how I do my seasonal spreads and setting up the month of December. I hope you got some value out of seeing how you might want to work with the seasons in your bullet journal. I know I have really enjoyed this way of bullet journaling last year and I'm looking forward to bringing this method forward into the new year. There is something incredibly satisfying about the beginning of a new season for me. I love the beginning of a fresh start. I like the first of the month. I like Mondays. I have always really loved getting a good foot forward at the beginning of a new cycle. So new years, new seasons, everything about that is really awesome, initiatory energy to me. So this is by far one of my more favorite times of the year. I'm feeling good. I love how these spreads turned out. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And as always, live long and prosper. I will see you back here very shortly for another video. Bye.